Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kyle. I talk about cameras, photography, and all that good stuff. As you could probably read by the title, this is about the Tamron 18 to 300 awesome zoom lens autofocus with VC, which is image stabilization for the Sony A6000 series of cameras. I say series of cameras because I like to take example photos with my Sony A6000, as well as my A6100, which I'm filming on right now. This lens also does come out for the Fuji X mount. So I will put links to both mounts in the description, affiliate links, if you guys are so inclined to maybe purchase this lens or something like that. Um, but we will go through the pros and cons of this lens. If you care what box it came in, it's this big white box, nothing special. Packaging was nothing special, not that important. What's important is like I talked about in the preview video uh, when this lens was announced was it is really awesome that Tamron has entered the Sony APS-C lens market with autofocus lenses. So this is the one of three lenses that have the 11 to 20, I believe the 17 to 70, and now they have this 18 to 300 massive, and massive in terms of zoom. It's not really that big of a lens, lens that is just, it's a lot of different things. Okay, so I wrote a bunch of stuff down to talk about. Like I said, I wanna talk about the cons first. There's not that many, not that many cons, but there are a couple. And then the pros outweigh the cons, uh, just to kind of spoil it for you. I'm also gonna just do photos throughout the video because I feel like doing the photo montage kind of past that at the moment. I kind of like doing the photos throughout. So anyway, let's jump into the cons. So probably the first bad thing, and it's not so much a knock on this specific lens, but a lot of lenses out there that are wide zoom lenses is that they are not good in low light. And this lens is no exception. The aperture range is f 3.5 at its widest 18. And then when you zoom all the way out at 300 millimeters, you're at f 6.3. So it's really kind of a daytime lens. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for sports photography inside like gymnasiums and things like that. Yeah, I, I think this is really built for daytime. It's built for wildlife, being out adventuring and all those different types of things. And yeah, so not the best aperture range, but also to be expected for such a wide zoom range. Okay, and the next thing, which may be the biggest con is the zoom ring is not super smooth. Like it's actually really tight at times and then not tight at times. It's just, if you are looking to go from 18 to 300 in like one swift movement, um, I don't know if the lens is going to loosen up over time, but right out of the box, it is very, just kind of like jittery. It's it's just it's just not smooth. I mean, that's the best way I can put it. I was looking at the mic here to see if it was picking up the sound. But yeah, um, I'm a little disappointed. Like it's definitely, I think, the biggest con besides, you know, not being great in low light is just the zoom is, it's, it's not the best. And I was hoping that it was gonna be really good. Just something to be aware of. It's not built for video shooting per se, unless you're locked on a tripod. Um, but you know, the image stabilization does help with the video shooting. I just think that the zoom ring kind of kills it for me. Um, and that could be better. If there is ever another version of this lens or if they ever do even like a, an 18 or a 100 to 400 for Sony APS-C, I would hope that they do the zoom ring a little bit better. Okay, and then really the last con, which is maybe just like a couple small cons built together, is that it's a no frills lens. So they have a lock switch here, um, which obviously when it's engaged, the lens doesn't drift open when you have it in your bag or something like that. So that's nice, um, but there's no, um, there's no VC switch. So the um, vibration compensation, there's no button for that. And there's no focus limiter switch or anything like that. It's just a, a lock switch and that's it. So it doesn't feel like a super luxury lens in terms of buttons and things like that. Um, but you know, it's, it's just a no frills type of zoom lens. Okay, so that's literally the bad about this lens. Now, I have a bunch of bullets about how good it is. I'm gonna keep each one of them short. 
but let's talk about it. The first thing that's great about this lens, in my opinion, is the price and performance. So the performance of this lens is great, really throughout the range at 18 millimeters all the way to 300. I was really impressed kind of just with its general image quality. Sharpness is great. Um, you know, chromatic aberration and flaring is well controlled. I mean, it comes with a lens hood for flaring and just overall wasn't finding anything that really stood out to me and, you know, made me think that the price wasn't worth it. And the price is $700. So it comes in at like $699, so $700. And I think that's a great price. You have the Sony G lens, the 70 to 350 millimeter variable aperture. That has the bells and whistles, like the different switches and things like that on the lens. The build quality of that lens is a little bit better than the Tamron, but the zoom range isn't anywhere near the, the wideness of this one. That G lens can go a little bit further at 350 millimeters, but you lose more than 50 millimeters at the wide end. Let's start off with talking about the good things with the VC. So that is vibration compensation or control if you wanna say that, but I think it's vibration compensation. In other words, it is like Sony's OSS, optical steady shot. So if you're zoomed in at 300 millimeters all the way out, it is going to really, really help with the micro jitters. Now, if you wanted to vlog with this lens, which you can do, by the way, at 18 millimeters at the widest, um, you can definitely do it, especially if you have, say, like the A6000, you have image stabilization or VC on this lens to do that. And then if you wanna shoot birds in the next couple seconds at 300 millimeters, you can do that. So the lens is extremely versatile. And again, I think it's very well priced at 700 bucks for a lens that you could vlog with or a lens that you could shoot bird photography with. It's just got a lot of depth with its zoom range and its capabilities. So it's cool, awesome, love the VC, and I actually think it does a really good job. It's not just a couple of letters on the lens or in the description, it actually does a good job. Also something that I didn't expect was it's not that heavy. I mean, it's a lot of glass, a lot of moving parts and things like that. It's 1.37 pounds, so I think that also makes it somewhat of an option to do vlogging. And like I said, it goes down to 18 millimeters, and you're at f3.5 at that. So if you want a little bit of out of focus, you can get that too. And to keep it rolling at the 18 millimeters is that it has a very close minimum focusing distance at its widest. So at 18 millimeters, it's about 5.9, so about six inches. So. If you wanna get up close and take pictures of flowers or something like that, or even bugs or things like that, you can do this with this crazy zoom lens. And then if you wanna say, take a picture of a flower at 300 millimeters, you need to be a couple feet away. But with that, you can blow out anything in the background with lens, uh, the lens compression and being at 300 millimeters. So that's kind of nice. Again, you need to do that at the daytime because you'll be at F6.3 at its longest at 300 millimeters. But I think it's cool how you can do up close macro photography if you want, or you can do hyper zoomed in macro photography and blow away anything in the background and get real good subject isolation. Then I guess rolling from subject isolation would be portraiture. I think this is a great portrait lens because you can shoot it at say, 85 millimeters if you want, or you can do the full frame equivalent of 85 millimeters and you know, around the 50 millimeter range, or you can shoot a portrait at 300 millimeters. Say you're in Canada driving along the beautiful roads there or something like that. You can do a portrait 300 millimeters and just obliterate the background, or you can pull it back uh, be it say like 50 millimeters or something like that, get some of the background in there. It's just, it can do a lot of different things. And I also think that the image quality doesn't suffer too much. So say like, you know, say you're looking at the Sigma 56 millimeter F1.4, that's the best portrait lens for Sony APS-C cameras, just flat out. But it's also kind of specifically tailored to that. So if you want a lens that could do portraits and still get good quality images, also do 18 millimeters vlog, do bird photography, wildlife photography. Oh, you wanna shoot sports on a sunny day and you wanna do up close stuff and the ball's out way out there. You can do that with this lens. So 
just kind of wrapping up all the good things in the one is talking about just the versatility of a wide zoom lens like this. And I think also the technical ability of this. So having the minimum focusing distance be super short, having great image quality all throughout its zoom range and having VC and things like that. That's what makes this lens a complete package and being under a thousand dollars kind of telling Sony like, hey, we're making the best all around zoom lens for APS-C and we're putting it on your mount and I think it's gonna sell like crazy. I think this is a great lens for a lot of Sony A6000 users. Yeah, I know I haven't been looking at my phone and my list, I've just been rambling off good things, but the last but not least thing is that I think this could be a great kit lens or combo kit lens replacement. What I mean by that is um, a lot of times like Best Buy or even on Amazon, they offer deals with the A6000 or A6100 with the 16 to 50 power zoom lens and the 55 to 210 millimeter zoom lens. Both actually good lenses. I like the, the zoom lens, uh, the 55 to 210 a little bit better. You guys love that review that I did on that lens and I was very shocked how many views that video got, but it's because people are interested in getting zoom lenses for the A6000 type camera. I think this lens can replace both of those. So if you have both of them and you're looking just to like a one size fits all and you don't have the money for say the G16 or 15 to 60, what the hell is that? The Sony 16 to 55 F 2.8, which is a great, aperture and it's a constant aperture and it's a G, you know, lens from Sony, but it's $1,300 sometimes brand new. And if you don't want to buy it used, you can get something like this. The 18 to 300 from Tamron has image stabilization, doesn't have that fast of an aperture, but covers way wider of a range. And like I said, if you have say the 16 to 50 and you're really not using it and you're using the 55 to 210 more, but you want more range, like it's like, hello, Tamron made your answer. And I think that's gonna be really attractive to a lot of people out there who are, you know, looking to upgrade, looking to move up and just have that flexibility. This could be like a lens that you have for like six years and you don't buy another lens. Like maybe you buy like one prime along the line because you wanna test that out, like a really fast aperture. But this lens could like, <laughs> it could do so much. You could do like street photography, a little bit of macro, a lot of landscape photography, outdoor sports photography, wildlife in general, or daily travel and street type stuff. Did I say street photography already? Anyway, I, I've been gushing about this lens because I've had such a fun time using it. A lot of the lens reviews on this channel are prime lenses, so fixed focal length and really fast apertures. I think the last video I did was a 0.95 manual focus prime lens. So totally different for me to get a zoom lens with optical steady uh with image stabilization and just such a wide range so it's been really fun for me and i hope i've kind of given you guys a good overview of what to expect with this lens you know it's got good build quality the the zoom is a little sticky it's a little stiff um doesn't have all the bells and whistles of say like a sony g lens but for the price for the image quality that you're getting and all of the things that I've already mentioned. I think it's a great pickup. And like I said earlier, affiliate links down in the description. Of course, find the gear where it's cheapest for you guys. And again, big thanks to Tamron for taking a chance on me and finally hooking up and sending the lens out to review. It's a shame I have to send it back, but uh, maybe in the future, they'll let me keep one. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Can't wait to review some more Tamron lenses. I have my eye on that 11 to 20 f2.8. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to review that lens too. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Later. Today, as you can tell by the title, we are reviewing the Tamron, oh crap, face detection's on.